Ooh, welcome to our Hebrew study. And we're going to pray and get right down to business. Abba, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your compassion and mercy poured out on us. We thank you for salvation through your beloved son, Yahusha. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done. We thank you for loving us. You are just so awesome and wonderful. And we love you with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our strength. Be glorified, be magnified in this study. And Abba, give us hearing ears and seeing eyes so we can hear what you are saying. And we can see you in your glory and in your love and kindness and compassion. And give us receptive hearts so that we may receive your word and not only receive, but walk in it. Halakha. We thank you and we give you honor and praise in Yahusha's mighty name. And it is so hallelujah. All right, so we're going to get right down to it. Okay. All right, we're in our... Uh, 28th Hebrew study and, and tenets of the covenant, the part four of tenets of the covenant. So let's start the slideshow and uh, we'll go from there. So this is part four, tenets of the covenant. And, and, and since last week, I know there's been a lot of heavy duty information or, and before we had a break and it's been a lot of heavy duty information. So we're gonna do a lot of review this, this lesson because we don't wanna go too fast where you miss everything and nothing is sticking. Uh, and that is uh, what uh, the goal is for you to learn and things will stick, okay? All righty. So let's do heritage, history and identity. That's the first, um, that is the first um, part of our lesson. So we're going to look at a, um, um, hold on. We're going to look at um, uh, a short video, three minutes and 41 seconds, where we have Israelites in Ghana near Pokue Oz, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Now we miss celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles due to um, our, our daughter being uh, sick and fighting off uh, this attack and us fighting it off. So so let's just see how they celebrate. I, 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 I can just about promise you that we won't be celebrating like that. Uh, anytime soon we've got to get we've got to um, we've got to get ourselves um, accustomed to celebrating the feast um, the most high stated uh, beyond the rivers of Kush which is another name for Ethiopia it used to be Kush now is Ethiopia out of his own mouth that means many of his chosen people would be in Africa. So if you look at a, um, a map of Africa, you'll see the Nile River and it will uh, uh, split up a little bit, but beyond the rivers, uh, in indicating the Western side of Kush or Ethiopia. Uh, and it wasn't always, it used, it used to be that the entire uh, African continent was called East Ethiopia. So, uh, so that's where many of his chosen people would be in Africa. Okay. And then second Ezra, Ezra, that is one of the apocryphal books, 1340 through 48 says that they will be keeping the law that they did not keep in their own land. So here it is in Ghana. So I'm going to stop sharing it and get this video up so that you can see. So you can see uh, the these Ghanaians 
um, celebrating the Feast of Tabernacle. It's just three minutes. These are Hebrews. Now, if you'll notice, they are waving branches. If you read uh, about this feast in Leviticus 23, it tells that we, are, that we are supposed to build sukkahs or booths or ra tents rather and stay in them for the seven days of the, of the feast of Sukkot. And uh, then uh, at the end of the feast or during the feast, we are to get uh, leafy branches and, and celebrate and wave them uh, and wave them in the air. Okay. Uh, and so uh, are you, can you, we can't see, see the screen. Oh, okay. no, we I can't. I did it again, didn't I? Okay. Or right. I did it again. Hold on. Hold on. I knew it looked real funny. So let me share the screen. Uh, let, let me go back to the, uh, let, me go, let me go back to where I was. Okay, now share the screen. I'm going to learn how to share more than one, um, more than one uh, screen up here. I, I got to work on that. Okay, so here we are again. Can you see it? Can everybody see it? Yep. Okay, great. All right. So these are the Hebrews in Hebrew Israelites in Ghana. Here we go. And as I said about the, the uh, branches, that's what they are doing. They are dancing and waving these branches. This is how they were instructed by Yahuwah, the Most High, in celebrating these feasts. And see how they are dancing? This is how our ancestors celebrated the feast. And see, they wore, the women wore headpieces. And they wore white. And they wore um, uh, tunics with fringes that's what that was part of the command that they are to wear fringes and we need to start trying to get get into that where we wear fringes because that's how we are have been commanded to um, that's the clothing we've been commanded to wear the fringes are the little uh, tassels at the end of their tunics Okay, it continues on like that. So I just wanted you, you all to see this. This is how our ancestors actually celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. So uh, these in Africa and Ghana, they have kept the tradition. Nothing has changed with them. So they were, and, and just like the uh, Ezra, second Ezra, I have that scripture. They will, um, they, they kept the feast that they didn't keep in their home, own homeland. That's why they were, uh, they were forced out because uh, they were not obeying uh, the Most High. Okay, so let's just stop this.
And, um, oh, Okay, now I've got to find it. Hold on. Okay. All righty. Okay, let me make sure that it's um it's done. Okay, it's done. All right, so let let's go back to um back to our meeting. Okay, hold on, hold on. I tell you what. Back to meeting. Okay, somehow I am not doing a good job here. I've got to figure out what's going on here. Show grid videos, thumbnail videos, show active speaker videos. Let's see. Okay. Um, can somebody give me a suggestion about this? What did I do wrong? Anybody? I lost my PowerPoint. You lost what? My PowerPoint. Go down to the bottom where you no. probably have to reopen it. Okay, can you all see this? Yeah, we can. Okay, great. Okay. So, all right. So now we're to uh, second Esdras. And I wanted to put this, I just wanted to read this to you. Okay. 1340 through 48. Uh, and it reads, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Oshea or Hosea the king, whom Salmanasa, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they unto another land. But they took this counsel amongst themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen. So it took them being uh, carried away prisoners for them to return to Yah's ways and his commandments and laws. So, uh, so, so that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes and they, which they never kept in their own land. Okay. And 43, and they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. So even though they were obedient, but they were being led into captivity, uh, they were trying to escape captivity. The Most High was uh, held the flood. So they didn't pass over because the rivers would sometimes overflow and they'd be difficult to cross. So on uh, verse 45, for through that country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Arseret. 
Arseret. Okay, let's continue. Then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come, the highest or the most high shall stay the springs of the stream again that they may go through. Therefore you saw the multitude with peace. But those that be left behind of your people are they that are found within my borders. So this is a little clip of the book of Ezra, E-S-D-R-A-S, -S, Ezra. And so I wanted to just let you see that because a lot of times, um, uh, uh, you know, there's references to those apocryphal books, which the Gentiles, some left, they left some references to those books. But I wanted to just give you that. This is written in Old English because, um, because the, the, uh, I did not have time to uh, translate it into um, uh, our modern day English. And so uh, the, the words are spelled a little like the, the Old English. All right. Okay, so let's move on. Now we have names and terminology review. Okay, so we're still learning these names. Uh, we're still learning these names. And uh, you want me to? Okay. Yahuwah. I am that I am, or I will be that I will be. El Yahuwah, Lord God. Yah means I am. Yahuwah el Hai, pardon me, mm -hmm. the Lord my God, Yahuwah el Hanu, Hayanu, the Lord our God, Yahuwah el Kaya, the Lord your God, and then the word most high, Yahushua, uh, Yah is salvation, which is Jesus, Yahushua Hamashiach, salvation in the Messiah, Jesus Christ, okay? okay? Okay, and then we have the Ruach Elohim, uh, and that is pronounced Elohim, that is correct spelling, from Hebrew to English, Elohim, breath of, uh, uh, what we understand is breath of God, a spirit of God. But, you know, eventually after we've done this about, about a year, we're going to go ahead and get rid of these uh, English names or the heathen names that was uh, that was given and written in the Bible. And then we have Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. And Ruach Yahuwah, breath of Yah or God and spirit of God. And Ruach Hamashiach, the spirit of Christ. And of course, Yasha El is the Hebrew name for Israel. Okay. Okay. So let's look at the Hebrew covenant versus Christianity. Okay. Okay. A covenant with Yahushua, not a religion. Christianity, a religion invented by the Catholic Church for supremacy. Okay, so this was invented so they could rule things, okay? Keep Torah, commandments, laws, and statutes. Yeah, that's the Hebrew covenant. Yeah, okay. A Hebrew covenant. Keep Torah, commandments, law, and statutes. Christianity does not believe in keeping y'all's laws, statutes, and commands, interpret scripture to suit their supremacy narrative, believe that the law was done away with. Okay. Okay. Oh. Basically, uh, the Hebrew, I mean, the Catholic Church and on down has, has did thing to suit their fancy mm -hmm. uh, uh, more exactly to keep uh, the Hebrews down or keep the Hebrews for being who uh, Yah has created them to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're still in Hebrew covenant versus Christianity. Uh, the Hebrew covenant 
In the Hebrew covenant, we keep Yah's feast, his holy days, and Shabbat, which is the first of the holy feast. The Shabbat is the first of the feast. And for Christians, uh, Christianity, they observe pagan holidays in honor of the sun god. They observe Sundays or and they meet on Sundays in honor of the sun god. Now here we have a graphic of the Pope and that is a sun that he is worshiping. If you look at that, that is a sun and they worship sun gods. And a lot of people in Christianity may have seen this kind of picture, but they don't know what that means. They think he's just holding up some holy object or whatever, but they worship the sun, the sun God, okay? All right, let's continue on. Uh, I'm gonna take this cause uh, uh, yeah, I'll just take this page too. And you see another picture of the Pope, the current Pope, uh, with the, another statue of the sun. Now, the, the middle picture is supposedly the heart of Jesus. And you'll see all of the rays of the sun around that heart, okay? And then they go even further with this quote-unquote Jesus and they show a picture of the sun being a halo over his head. The sun being a halo over his head. And that's that same heart. Uh, that's that a picture. There, there is one where they have it, where these rays of the sun come out from that heart. But you know, this is idolatry to the fullest extent. And uh, because we know that Yah Yahusha didn't look like this. And uh, so this is some of the Catholic church slash Christianity that um, that is some of their doing, okay? Hebrew covenant verse Christianity continued. Hebrew covenant, follow Yah's law, of love among the brethren. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 39. Honor father, mother, and elderly. Honor your father and your mother as Yahushua has commanded you. Deuteronomy 5, 16. And uh, uh, we talked about this last time. This is a picture of... Uh, uh, we, I don't know what is a picture of, but but, but the point of the matter is that they uh, are wearing the same type of hoods and hats and uniform as the KKK. That okay. is the KKK. That is the KKK. Well, the KKK uh, 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 is symbolized, and 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 what's so distracting about it? Or uh, dis disheartening is, you know, in all of their evilness and all the things they do, then they've got behind that Jesus saved. So that's that that within itself is is uh yeah, yeah. And and yeah, we've we've seen this uh graphic a bunch of times. And uh they worship their quote unquote Jesus, and yet they are hateful and they murder the Hebrews. And uh, then they have Jesus saves, have the nerve enough to pose in front. Uh, and it looks like it's at some kind of church because uh, there's a um, pulpit. It looks like a lectern where there's a guy behind it. And then they have Jesus saves. So we know that they don't, you know, if, if, if whatever their uh, uh, Jesus is, I don't know what he taught, but he didn't teach the same things as Yahusha Hamashiach, the very son of the living Elohim. And so they must be, Jesus must have taught a, a different doctrine. 
So uh, that they could put Jesus save and then pose as with these hoods. Pose with these hoods. All right. Now, we're still a uh, Hebrew covenant versus Christianity. In the Hebrew covenant, uh, we honor Yahuwah, I am that I am, and Yahusha, Yah is salvation. We honor them by their names, okay? Um, uh, uh, and in Exodus 3 and 14, it says, And Elohim said unto Moshe, Ahaya Asher Ahaya, which means, I am that I am. Thus shall you say unto the children of Yashael, Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers, the Elohai of Abraham, and the Elohai of Isaac, and the Elohai of Jacob has sent me unto you. And he instructs, this is my name forever. And this is my mention unto all generations. So, so he's saying, this is what I am instructing you to call me, call on my name and, and uh, forever throughout all generations. If you remember, I think it's back in study 23, I believe. Uh, that we did with that we did go over this, but uh, it bears it uh, warrants us uh, going over it again. And of course, Christianity applies the term God to the holy name Yahuwah, who is the supreme being. And in Christianity, the Hebrew meaning of the word Lord is Baal, which is the Son God. Uh, uh, and, uh, and so he is another name. There's, there's several names of this sun God, uh, Tammuz and all of that. And we may go over that in later studies. So you want, want to ask the question, was this intentional? The Hebrew meaning of the word Lord is Baal. So was this intentional? It begs the question. Was it intentional or was it just a translation error? Because they had, when they um, translated uh, uh, the, it, the, the scriptures from Hebrew into Greek and then into English, um, uh, they did not bother to find out his name because there were some Hebrew um, Hebrews that were helping them to translate. So I don't know whether it was intentional, but it does uh, 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 it does tell us about to tell us to think about that. All right. When the house, uh, what happened to Yah's name? We talked about this last time. Uh, when the house of Judah was taken captive to Babylon. Babylonian paganism took a foreign grip on their hearts and mind. Yahusha's name had been entirely omitted and replaced with a title or term which can apply to any pagan de deity, Lord God. When the Teutonic. Teutonic people were converted to Christianity, the term God was applied to Yahusha. Teutonic denoting the Germanic branch of the Indo-European language family. The Hebrew meaning of the word Lord is Baal. Okay. Okay. This is just a review of what we um, have studied previous, but, but it doesn't hurt to really know it. All right. Hebrew versus Christianity. He, uh, the, the covenant, part of the covenant is to follow Yah's dietary laws, okay? Uh, and, and we believe and trust him because he created us and made our bodies. And he know what's healthy to go into our bodies that will keep us healthy and to keep us well and to keep sickness from 
from uh, uh, attacking our bodies. So we believe that his dietary laws are referring to what y'all considers as food mm. and helps to keep us healthy. Now, if you want to know uh, in detail, you can just turn to Leviticus 7 and you can get uh, uh, you can get more information on his dietary laws. We will be studying that down the road, okay? Uh, and then Christianity believes Acts 10, 9 through 14. So we already said that they will interpret scripture to suit their narrative. So they believe that Acts 10, 9 through 14 refers to food when it is actually referring to the Hebrew diaspora. In other words, all of the Hebrews that have been scattered all in, during, on the, to the four corners of the earth, that's called the diaspora. So when, when Peter saw, uh, saw this sheet lowering down and Yahuwah says, ride, rise, Peter, slay and eat. And uh, then uh, Peter said, no, uh, no, yeah, I have never eaten anything unclean. Uh, uh, so that he says, uh, uh, and in verse 28, it, it, it goes even further. And he said to them, you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Yahudi or that is an Israelite from, Ju uh, from, uh, from uh, Judea to keep the tribe of Judah to keep company or come into one, unto one of another nation. But Yahuwah has showed me, he's explaining this to the, some of the other uh, disciples. He says, but Yahuwah has shown me that I should not call, see what it says? Man, not food, man common or unclean. So this is an explanation and an understanding. So that knocks that uh, uh, belief uh, off, off, its, off its feet that uh, this scripture in, in Acts 10 is speaking of the diaspora, those who had been scattered because they were trying to escape slavery. They were trying to escape uh, uh, a persecution from some of, the, uh, some of the nations around them. And uh, so this is what uh, this is what this is talking about. But we follow his dietary laws, and once we begin, we make up our mind. It's an individual decision, but once we make up our minds, your body feels better. Your body feels because you're eating what we call clean, quote unquote, clean, clean foods. And you're eating what is called foods, all right? Review of previous lessons. Commandments, number one, Exodus 20. And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah, Elohiah, the Lord your God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, you shall have no other gods before me. What are the other gods that we may put before Yahuwah? And we went over that last time. Mm -hmm. Okay. God, does anybody, can anybody remember some of the things we said last time? Is anybody listening? You said, what was the question? What are other gods that we were discussing last week? Uh, money. Fame. Power. Yeah, power. Anything you love more than Yah? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Any and everything that you love more than Yah. So that's good that you remember. Okay. And uh, what, somebody else said something? Okay. So, so the other gods that we may put before Yahuwah are other people. Our husband or our, our wife, girlfriend, 
boyfriend, our children, our family, even our parents, if we have them, you know, if we, if we use them as an excuse not to obey and serve Yahuwah, okay? So all of these are uh, people groups. Yeah, it could be friends. It could be loved ones or whatever. When we put them before obeying Yahuwah, and we love them more than we obey Yahuwah, then we we get ourselves in trouble and in transgressing uh, his covenant and his disobeying his commandment. Mm -hmm. And money, you said that, power, power, and fame. And then there are material things, houses, cars, clothes, jewelry. Uh, and whatever it is that, that that just mesmerizes us and holds our attention and keeps us off focus from uh, the most high, okay? Anything, jobs, our job. Do we, uh, do we spend so much time thinking about our job that we can't obey his commands? And that we can't, uh, that we, we're so worn out that we don't even have time to oh, crack open our, our Bibles or whatever. Are we putting our jobs in front of Yahuwah? Okay. And then a last one is the me God. The me God, self-worship. We talked about that in the last um, uh, lesson how um, how we can we can uh, put our own desires and our own feelings and our own you know whatever we want to do uh, and we're, we you know and we might not verbalize it but we say well I'm gonna do what I want to do in other words uh, you know uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not doing that I would rather do what I want to do that that's too hard that's too hard for me. That is, that's too difficult for me. And so you excuse yourself or we excuse ourselves from obeying his commands because we are self, 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 me, me, me. And the article that I was, uh, that we showed last uh, study, how people take more selfies than any other kind of picture. And that shows, uh, and that is a clue that we are that we are worshiping the me God. And you see on Facebook, I hadn't been on Facebook in a while, but you see, uh, you've got people that are put a different selfie on Facebook every day, sometimes two or three a day, you know, because they're worshiping the me God. They're worshiping the me God. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. Exodus 20, commandment number two, verse four, you shall not make unto you any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah Elohekah, the Lord your God am a je am jealous, am a jealous ill, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showed mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th this verse is telling us about those, those other gods that we just got through talking about. We shouldn't make any graven images or likeness. Uh, 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 the sun god, and they, 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 they some worship birds, some uh, 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 all kinds of animal and all, you know, mm -hmm. and 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 they make them uh, into gold or silver or or, or whatever kind of uh, uh, material they use. But those are not the real god, and Yah is asking us uh, not to uh, bow down to them to serve them. Commanding us. Yes. Oh, we're commanding, commanding us. us. Commanding us. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, 
So we're talking about generational curses. So let's dig a little, little bit deeper. Let's look at, let's name some generational curses. Because we as a people, as Israelites, seed of Jacob, uh, we, it talked about that in Deuteronomy 28. It talked about that. And so we have been suffering because of the sins of our fathers, because of the sins of our fathers. And I was, uh, I was watching a documentary uh, a couple of days ago about, you know, it's part of my uh, uh, genetic, uh, I, I, I have a Nigerian and Cameroon, but also Benin and togo and they were they were worship now they are in witchcraft and voodoo really really heavy so you know it makes me think how many others of our relatives you know they use voodoo and if you remember there was a there was a news article i don't know who remembers seeing this but some africans won um i think it was the world hockey uh, uh, championship. And so a newspaper, wherever they were, accused them of voodoo, using voodoo to win. <laughs> you know, our people are just superior athletes. I mean, that, that that's not voodoo, you know, but they were accused of, of, using, of um, using voodoo. Okay, so what are generational curses that we know of? What are some, let's just quickly talk about it. Can we get some? Um, can we get some uh, 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 participation? What are generational are, curses? Are you asking us to define it, or are you asking us uh, what what are some generational curses? Well, do you understand what it is? I mean, it's a curse that's been passed down through the bloodline, right? Yeah, being passed down through the bloodline. Mm hmm. Could be a sickness. Yeah. Okay. So let's just hear. Let's just hear your thoughts. Um, well, I can use um us in as an example. You remember how we found out that um like uh fetal death is one that we seem to have been um that seems to have been passed down. Mm -hmm. So that was that's an example of a um yeah, generation a curse. curse that has been broken. Yeah. What else? That is a curse. Yes, it is. Yeah. How about sickness such as uh uh you know we we've talked about when you go to the doctor they ask you about things that uh they ask you about uh is about anybody in your family has high blood pressure, heart disease, and blah, blah, blah. They don't medically uh, equate it to that, but that's that's what it's all mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. It's what it's all about. They're asking you, has, uh, it, you know, is there any curses in your family? You know, like high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, heart trouble, or, or arthritis, or cancer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, and it makes you wonder, you know, if you didn't know about generation of curses, what does what my father or my mother or my grandparents had uh, have to do with me? I'm a I'm an individual individual person, but see, we know about generational curses. We know that they are real. And if any uh, if any people group have suffered generational curses is Hebrews, is the Hebrews. We've suffered so many generational curses. And though, though these are diseases that pastor just talked about that are that run rampant in our community, in our families. It run, they run rampant in our community. It, not only that, but uh, 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 I don't know how you would exactly word it, but uh, if 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 a father abuses the mother some type of way, then there's a great possibility mm -hmm. that the son is going to do the same thing. Or uh, uh, if the daughter has 
uh, the mother has some type of hideous act or history, then the daughter's going to repeat it. Mm -hmm. You know, so th those things are yeah. uh, 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 curses. Yeah, they are. They are. They are. Okay, let, let's hear from you. We're not going to take up too much time, but but um, can we hear from you? I would say words. The words you speak mm -hmm. get passed down through every generation. Yeah, like like you can curse your... Uh, mm -hmm. Are you saying you can curse your children? Yeah, yeah you can curse saying? your children, basically telling them maybe they ain't going to be anything in life. They're never yeah. going to do nothing with themselves. And that kind of get passed along. That's right. That is right. That is right. Because they, when I was growing up, and I, they, you don't hear it now, but they used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Uh, but that is not true. Words will hurt you, especially if it's coming from someone who has authority over your life. You know, especially if it's coming from father, you know, and even mother, I've, I've heard mothers and seen them, how they have, um, how they have, uh, 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 you know, they call their kids yeah. dumb and they, they actually use profanity, you know, like in the grocery store against their own children. And they have no idea what they're doing. No idea what they're doing. I know there was a, there was a woman back home who was raising her two grandchildren. And uh, and she thought it was cute and funny to call her granddaughter a hoe. And then she thought it was cute and funny to call her grandson a thug. And those words, be, uh, those words came to pass in their lives because she had the authority over their lives she was raising them and so they manifested in those two children's life they're grown adults now but they manifested and so we just have to be so so careful about what the words we speak to our children they are they, they are growing up they are precious we don't need to to uh curse their lives we really don't we really don't you really want, and I, I remember back uh, back in the day back home that people, you know, it was a, some kind of gathering. Then somebody would say, "Well, they were getting ready to go," and say, "Well, let me go on down to the po house." You know, you're just cursing yourself. You know, you're just cursing yourself to into poverty, and uh, and so we just have to be careful. So yeah. Um, MJ, those words are, are are really, really bad. Really, really bad. Life and death is in the power. Of the tongue. Of the tongue. Anybody else has have anything to add? Okay. Uh, Exodus 20, commandment three. And we went over that. You shall not bring the name of Yahuwah Elohaika which is translated into Lord your God, to not, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that brings his name to not. And so what does this commandment mean? And I have the answers because I figured that we needed to review this some more. All right. Was it non-existence? To non-existence. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's just look at the history of how we got, or how, how it went from Yahuwah, I am that I am, to God or Lord. Uh, it, uh, because it, it, it really changed hands with the heathen, with the Gentiles. So uh, let's just look at this. You shall not bring the name of Yahuwah El Haka to naught, for Yahuwah will not will not hold him guiltless that that bring his name to naught. 
Uh, King James Dictionary de definition not bad, worthless, of no value or account. Okay, when Israel went into captivity the second time in Babylonian, the Babylonians profaned and disrespected Yah's, Yahuwah's name. To put a stop to this, the elders put a ban against pronouncing Yahuwah's name. By never saying the name Yahuwah, it quickly became unknown to even the children of Israel. And Ezekiel 36, 19 through 21, 19, and I scattered them among the heathens, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doing, I judged them. Uh, we talked about this before. Uh, the, the Babylonians profane uh, 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 you know, whose name make fun of it and, and all those kind of things. Cursed so, his name. Cursed his name. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, the elders, the leaders of the uh, the people thought they were doing the right thing by forbidding people to uh, uh, call him by his name. But what, what was happening, uh, they did it so long that the people actually forgot. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. what Yahuwah's name was and what it mm -hmm. meant, okay? Mm -hmm. So does that uh, uh, so does that explain it to you guys? I, I know we went over it, but sometimes it's easy to forget. Some of these things are so heavy and deep that it's easy to forget. Uh, you know, and, 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 it's, and it's more difficult to, uh, to understand and then uh, regurgitate the history of what happened to his name. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you about it at the end of the lesson. We're just about done anyway. Okay. And this is the scripture. And when they entered into the heathen, this is a continuation from last slide, Ezekiel 36, 19 through 21. I'll just start it over again. And I scattered them among the heathen. And why did he do that? Because they were uh, rebellious and disobedient. And they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them and continuing. And when they entered unto the heathen where they went, they profaned my holy name. So this, this is exactly what happened. They cursed his name and they profaned his name. So uh, that was a, a practice that, um, that the ancients did when they, were, uh, when they were opposite, opposing each other. They would curse the God of the people that they were opposing. They would curse their names. And that's what happened with David and Goliath. Goliath cursed God's name for 40 days before David went and slew him and cut his head off. And David said, who is this that uh, who profanes the name of the living God? You can read that uh, account in 1 Samuel. It's around the 16th, uh, maybe 17th or 18th uh, uh, chapters of 1 Samuel. Uh, so... Um, so they profaned my holy name. This is Yahuwah speaking. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. So that is how they profane his name by, by calling him Lord and, and, uh, and so forth. This is what happened. You know, I may, I know that this might be a little, uh, a little heavy. You know that when we call you know, when we call him Lord, it was considered as profaning his holy name. So that's why I encourage us to be very intentional in calling him Yahuwah or even Yah. Okay. Because even in the songs, you know, uh we we were calling him Lord, but it is considered profaning his holy name. So I didn't say it, so don't shoot the messenger, but this is what uh, Yahuwah is saying in verse 20. And look at verse 21. But I had pity 
for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had, prof had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. So that's why it, we have to be so intentional uh, in in uh, honoring His name by what He by by the name He told us to refer to Him, to call Him. That's Yahuwah, which means I am that I am. Okay, okay. So the this band of not reverencing when they would not call Him Yahuwah. This ban of not reverencing the name of Yahuwah completely uh, was completely contrary to his commands that we are to call him Yahuwah. We can call him the great I am or I am that I am or Yah. That means I am. Okay. But we need to be in intentional. And this is a learning experience, isn't it? So we, you know, things that we didn't even think were wrong, we are finding out from the Holy Scriptures and from the things that Yahuwah is, say, Yahuwah is saying that we need to, we need to change uh, uh, our, our speech a little in who we call him, okay? All right, so let's move on. What happened to Yah's name when the house of Judah was taken captive to Babylon? Babylonian paganism took a firm grip on their hearts and minds. In the Greek and modern translation, the result of the ban on using Yahuwah's name had taken, a, had taken away the key of knowledge. Yahuwah's name had been entirely omitted and replaced with the title or term which can apply to any pagan deity, God and law. We just, just yeah, talked about yeah. that. Okay. Anybody remember what the key of knowledge is? Any takers? No, nah, I don't remember what the key of knowledge is. Okay. The key of knowledge is... And the understanding opened up when we call him by his name. That's in lesson, that's in Hebrew study 23, I believe. It's either 22 or 23. We talked about the key of knowledge. And Yah Yahusha, the Messiah, was rebuking the, the scribes and Pharisees. But because he was he was telling them, you have shut up the key of knowledge because they were not calling Yahuwah by his name. And they were teaching the people in the temple not to call him by his name. And but we but just just this one thing, uh, a lot of those Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes were Adamites. They were the seed of Esau. Because the Romans had put them in uh, authority in the temple. So let's remember that. And he was rebuking them and upbraiding them because of how they were acting. Okay. So we know that this is what has happened. The key of knowledge. When we begin to use Yahuwah's name, uh, because he commanded us to use his name, call on it, call on his name and swear by his name, serve him by his name, cry out by his name, then uh, we open up the key of knowledge, of, of uh, uh, which is understanding things that we would otherwise not understand, okay? Okay, all right, so let's move, oh, to Q&A. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you, what happened to Yahuwah's name? Anybody want to take this in your own words? It went somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jazz, I, I review this lesson just, just on your account. Like I said, if Jazz don't remember, then probably everybody else don't. Remember. You said about the 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 note, huh? You're saying about uh 
What was the, the name question? Yahuwah? How did how how what happened to it? They proclaimed his name. They reduced his name down to no. Yeah, that's good. And what how what uh, was, give me a little brief history of it? What happened? Well, they just named him God and giving him generic names. Yes. Yeah. Uh and so uh with doing that, that kind of lessened his value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that he wants us to call him by his name, um, you know, because his name is great. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Good shot at it. Very good. Anybody else? His name was forgotten. Because uh, it was uh, the elders uh, and whoever was in charge um, uh, wouldn't allow them to call him by his name. And so as time went on, they actually forgot or didn't know who his name was, what his name was and what it meant. Right? Yeah. yeah. Pastor done gave y'all an answer, but I'm going to see, can somebody else re... Uh, re uh... Restate that. Jazz. Say what 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 you call it? The, the people oh. told him the pe the the people in charge told them not to use those names. Why? That's a good question. <laughs> Uh, because the Babylonians because they were, were they were profaning his name. Marking his name. Profaning yeah, profaning. Name. They were cursing his name. Yep. Okay, and they told him not to use his name because they were profaning his name. I got it. Now. You got it now? I got it. Okay. All right. All right. Then good. Uh, good. And then eventually, because they wasn't using the name, what happened? They forgot. They forgot. They forgot. And down through generations, they didn't know. Very good. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Uh, what is the key of knowledge? Ain't it calling him by his name? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. And it is, and it does what? It unlocks what? Anybody? It unlocks knowledge and understanding that we would not ordinarily have. And power. Yes. When we when we call him by I am that I am. Okay? Okay. All right. Well, unless you have some comments, I don't have any more questions. Um, any comments or what have you? Okay. Uh, okay. So next week, we're going to do commandment four. Anybody have any idea what that one is? Remember. It starts with remember. You know, Pastor just want to tell y'all all the time. What is it? What commandment starts with remember? Is well, the only one I I remember is, but I mean, I don't know if is it remember the. I don't. <laughs> Would you remember? Okay, oh, you, you remember like. When you were younger, they taught you remember to keep the Sabbath day. Yeah, or, that's it. That's it. Oh, remember to keep the Shabbat. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. Okay. So we're gonna go into to some detail of that. How do we observe the Shabbat? Uh, how does what does it say in the scriptures that we are to observe the Shabbat? Okay. 
All right. Any other comments or questions? Hey, Sister Sean. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Any other comments or questions from anyone? Okay. Well, we're done. We are done. We did a review and hopefully uh, you guys will remember because we were three or two or three weeks without uh, our normal Hebrew study. So, um, so I appreciate your joining in. It's always good to have a live class than just taping it, you know, than, than just recording it. So we appreciate it. And we're going to uh, pray and, and speak uh, the parting blessing. And we're going to say good night. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your commands, which are our instructions on how to live before you and how to be holy. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. And we thank you for your mercy and we thank you that you are slow to anger, but rich in grace and truth. That is who you are. So Father, be glorified in our lives. Let things that we are learning, let them become flesh in our lives. Help us to walk it out, to halakha, and to, uh, and to follow your way, and to follow the ancient paths that you have laid out for us. Because only the, only in those ancient paths are we we know that we are going to be blessed. When in covenant, we are going to be protected and we're going to have your provision. And you will watch over us with your mercy and goodness. So be glorified in our lives in Yahusha's name. And it is so. And now. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom. All right, love you and go in the shalom of the most high. And we are out.